Hey, owners, you might be worried right now that there's no future, no more careers left in art for you because of AI. And AI bros, you got hate for me to tell you this, but there are always gonna be severe limitations and caps to what AI and machine learning can do, but it's the truth. Welcome back to The Art Mentor. My name is Sean, and in this video, you're gonna learn skills that AI can't do, unaffected job fields by AI, as well as how you need to know and understand your value, your worth, what you can give to the world, and realize your amazing career and future in art, and it's gonna start by you knowing this. Critical to this discussion is really just coming to the understanding that AI art is a one-trick pony, and that one trick you can do is rendering. So if you've no doubt looked at everything across AI and what it's capable of doing, you're most likely just wowed in by what it's able to do, but it's all surface level, my friend. And it's honestly the least interesting, least important part of any type of artwork, especially if you're gonna go into art industries. It is not about that, friends. There's so much more, so much deeper meaning that needs to happen there. So if your rendering is the only thing that you think is keeping you back, you can learn how to do better. But don't let that affect you because there are way more important things that you need to learn how to do like this. The most obvious and critical flaw y'all is 100% this right here. Hands and feet are just always going to be, no pun intended, the Achilles heel of what AI can never really understand or know how to do. It understands that about as well as a kindergartner. But all jokes aside, y'all, here are some things that you can definitely start to do with this is start to do more interesting gestures with hands and feet. One thing that I personally like to do in a lot of my artwork, and I've especially been doing this a lot in the last year or so, is that I try and make sure that I convey the emotion of the character through every single part of their body, but especially their hands and feet too. Like, especially if somebody's doing like a big magic blast, complicated hand gestures like that. If somebody's really angry, I like it to be all like kind of gnarled and curled like that. If it's a soft and sweet, elegant motion. I like to show it like that too. If somebody's running, you show with a lot of force too. So think about how you can use those parts of your body, not only to show that you're, you know, a real artist, but also how you can show emotion through all of that. Now to make sure your artwork is really standing out, start implementing more of this. This is going to seriously level up all of your artwork. But if y'all are just doing standing characters that are just looking ahead or just looking up down to the side, y'all start to implement more expression, start to convey a mood, ex convey some type of emotion all the time. That is one of the main staples of AI art because I'm just gonna be real, y'all. It's like a whole bunch of just vacant Instagram models. A lot of this, it's a lot of this, and this, and this, oh yeah, and that too. These vacuous Instagram model poses are just boring as crap. I encourage y'all, start to be a lot more dramatic in your emotions. Get the whole face involved in there. Not just the brows, because AI can do that, but anything beyond that. Start to include the mouth, start to include opposite angles, start to include different ways, start to really emote that character so that you can convey what's happening in that scene. And that's gonna be something that people are really gonna latch onto. It's gonna make you stand out and it's gonna bring you a lot of good success in art. Emotionless, vacant smiles won't get you anywhere but you will get somewhere by doing this too. The most essential component to any artwork that is made by a human being, especially when we're looking at illustrations, especially when you're thinking about going into game fields, especially if you're thinking about going into any type of animation field is this, y'all. You need a narrative. You need to convey some type of story. People get latched into what the context is. And that's a major component that AI will always suck at because that is a humanistic quality that machines are never going to be capable of doing. It doesn't matter how they can pose. It doesn't matter how they can render it because if you can't tell a story, nobody cares. So if you're thinking about going into illustration, you wanna think big time about, again, how are you gonna convey what's happening in the scene? Why should we care? How do we feel? You wanna be able to look at an illustration, at your illustrations, at your designs, and just immediately get some type of feeling from it. So insert a mood into everything you're starting to do from henceforth, and you are definitely gonna be leagues above anything that a stupid machine can't do. Another major crux of machine learning is that it absolutely sucks at this. 
AI will never be able to handle professional level work or near professional level work, and especially working with private clients because it cannot handle specificity. It cannot handle the wealth of what a client would ask you for, whether that be an independent client, whether that be a commercial client, but it cannot handle specific direction. So just to give you an example, y'all, here's just a text description that you're looking at right now of a current project that I am working on. Wow, right? There are pages of me having a conversation with my client about about all the specifics of that character. I just wanna say good luck to making that prompt because it's never going to turn out exactly like it. In fact, by doing this type of a prompt, all the AI user will ever get is a really lousy compromise and the client's gonna be royally disappointed by it. Not convinced? Here are some more examples. Check out this character right over here. This is not only supposed to be a dwarven child, but she also was instructed to have fairy wings, a flower crown, and steel-toed bunny shoes. Oh, and armor that is made of thorns wrapping around itself. And she's shooting a bow while riding a black unicorn. So this exposes a major flaw in AI, which is that if no one's ever done it before, it can't figure out how the heck you're supposed to do it. This scene features a dragonborn character who's got scales that oscillate amongst all the spectrum of the rainbow, and he's also got a talking dragon axe, and he's also wearing a specific armor set that was given to me by my client. It cannot really innovate because its entire database is kind of the precedent for what it can and can't do. If it's not in there, it can't. But however though, you my friend, being a real artist, you can do anything because you are limitless, my friend. Now you're gonna get a lot more out of your artwork and a lot more attention by implementing these. A major handicap of AI and how it was trained and the data it was trained on, unethically by the way, is that it's traditionally just gonna have a lot of still, standing, boring poses. So really start to level up your dynamic posing. Start to have your characters doing something, no longer just standing still. And this is a real staple of illustration, of sequential art, of animation. AI will never be able to handle this. Really get into like splash art for video games. Go look at like Riot Games. They do amazing stuff. Go look at card art too. That's gonna be a really great source of inspiration for you for how you can more dynamically convey the action and the story and the mood of a scene right there. Start to do things that do not involve your characters in just boring, lame, static poses. AI just can't handle how the human body moves, what its limits are, and how to present it in a more interesting way because of the data set that it was trained on. I don't think it ever will. To avoid more lameness, y'all, make sure that you do this too. As you level up and you start to do a lot more group scenes and you start to do more interactions with characters and environments, y'all, there's a big component for you. Start to include a lot more interactions. Have characters in scenes, in illustrations, in your concept art, start to include a lot more interactions. And this especially goes to groups, like AI cannot handle groups. And again, even if it does handle groups, it has lame, boring, expressionless, vacant faces where they're just not doing anything, they're just walking, they're just standing. It also has a severe time grappling with proportions, especially with multiple people. Things get real wonky and weird, but it just can't handle any type of context. So think about in your artwork, how can you start to have a lot of context? How can that involve a story? How can you have two or more characters and especially groups of characters having some type of unified purpose that will bring a lot of great attention to you. It will show the art industry that you are a worthwhile member of its community. And more importantly too, is that you're really gonna be able to build something unique and special that only you can come up with, my friend. Have you ever thought about doing that? So taking all of this into consideration, y'all really need to come to this understanding. One of the worst, and I would say major misperceptions of the AI art community is that the higher quality the image is will lead that AI user to success within the art field. But y'all, I have to disrupt this and I have to drop a big bomb on this. That's absolutely not true. What people are really interested in has nothing to do with the picture. It does not matter the quality of the image. What matters is this. People don't buy art, y'all. They buy a human experience. They want to work with you. Companies want to work with you. Companies want to get exactly what they want out of you. Clients want to get a specific interaction out of you. They want a great customer service experience. And if you can deliver that to your your client, you are going to be a tremendous success and you're going to feel gratified as an artist and you're going to produce amazing stuff. Now, if you're still a little on the fence about jumping into the art career or what your future might be, let me just give you some support for a few industries that I don't think will ever be affected by AI in a massive capacity whatsoever. So if you're thinking about going into any of these industries, let me just have you rest assured, my friend, 
I don't think that these are really gonna be affected in anything saying otherwise, it's just pure AI bro propaganda. First off is concept art. You might be like, whoa, why Sean? It can produce so much more, so much better than me, right? Yeah, however though, that's not the point. The point of concept art is conveying an idea. It's conveying about a character, about a vehicle, about an environment. It's about a lot of things, but most importantly y'all, is that you have to be able to take extremely precise and specific directions, and you have to be able to iterate. You have to be able to do insane amounts of alterations. So that is a major handicap of AI and it's never gonna get to the point of what a human can do. At best, even if AI did come into concept art as a major element, it would require a heavy amount of paint overs to the point where it's never gonna be able to produce a polished finished piece. What y'all see at the end of a pipeline, at the end of concept art is not where it started. And I'm basing this by the way off of Feng Zhu, who's like the godfather of concept art. So I would trust him over some like teenager sitting in their mother's basement telling you that AI art is going to supersede it. I don't think that's going to be the case. Another common misperception is that architecture might go away. Well, uh, no, that's definitely not going to happen because again, what you see at the end of an architecture cycle, like that big, amazing building and all that, that is not the beginning product. There is an intense and extreme amount of detail and precision that has to be input into architecture. Most of architecture is not about designing beautiful homes. It's about like the actual specificity of like how many inches down to like the smallest degree is there between a stud and a wall and how much space there is in a room and how much height there is and exactly plotting out where something's going to go. That's the majority of architecture work. It's got nothing to do with just banging out some huge, awesome looking building that isn't even structurally sound and probably can't be built in the site where it's going to be built. So if you're thinking about going to that field, you're still safe too. And lastly, illustration. Illustration is never gonna go away. It's always gonna be handled at the highest level by human artists. You have to convey a narrative. It is for a purpose. If you're gonna be going into children's books, you have to tell a story about how the bunny got over here to there and they learned a lesson about it. It has to be about that mood and the story and it entails everything we've talked about in this video today. On a different level too, if you're gonna be going into like game art for illustration, if you're gonna be going into card art or any other similar field for that. It is big time about what you can do in the minutia of details that you can implement into it to not only make it look really good, but for it to sell that idea. And you must be able to take specific directions in order to accomplish that, which machines can't do because if it hasn't been done, then they don't know how to do it, nor will they ever. So why do all of those misperceptions exist? And why does the AI community think that they can take over every single art field? Let me just tell your friend, that's totally false. It's completely fiction and I'm going to show you all of that dangerous AI bro propaganda so that you can be aware of it and start to ignore it which you'll learn about right here in this video. Go check it out.